How's it going? Uh, yeah, we're, I say Pittsworth, I don't like saying Bongine. If you say Bongine, you've got to hold your nose up too high in the air. Um, basically, we're just grain cropping. Um, just a quick rundown. Farming not enough acres, um, just mainly with grain. We, we've stayed away from cotton. Um, and basically, yeah, our goal is um, we're trying to uh, grow about 130, 140 percent of our country in crop every year. So we're doing at least one third double cropping. I would like to increase that. The main reason we've gone to what we have is because we're trying to crop hard. It's just trying to control volunteer, things like that. So that's our mung bean crop last summer in our, in our strip of barley. Um, yeah. So anyway, we started with chaff decks. So I went to Western Australia, um, met over, up with a grower over there that's very forward thinking. And I said, do they work? And he said, yes, they do. Um, so it was just a no brainer when I got home. We had this machine on order. I just ordered the chaff decks, put them on. Um, we had problems with, um, we've been throwing sunflowers in some acres, just toying with the idea. Um, obviously sunflowers, they always throw grain at the back. It's a bit of a tricky one. So you know, if we can put it in the wheel tracks, it's just a no brainer. You know, it just keeps things looking cleaner for longer. But we are having trouble with feather top rose grass. Um, flea bane, I, I find with flea bane, crop top competition is the best thing. And then milk thistle is just getting harder. And John Johnson grass, we've just got lots of it. Um, as we take on more country, just dirty farmers. Um, you know, been flogging sorghum and that too hard. So Johnson grass is taking a bit of a hold. So we are finding it is working uh, very well with the Johnson grass, the chaff decks are, yeah. So, so that's just a couple of pictures of our machine. Um, yeah, just. Uh, yeah, we, we put a Mav Redicrop chopper on the back too. Um, if you have never seen one of them, they're pretty cool. Um, to try and get our better spread um, in, in some conditions. So, yeah, and that's a uh, picture. That's, so that's, um, that picture was taken about two years ago. Uh, pretty good crop of barley, and that's our trough lines. That's a wheel track, so. Yeah, it's quite thick. It's probably um, a good inch, maybe inch and a half thick at times. It's not very wide. Um, and it has not caused us any dramas at all um, with spraying or, or anything like that. Um, one thought I did have uh, is maybe it slows the water down instead of water running off your country. Um, it might slow the water down in your wheel tracks. Um, so, yeah, just uh, get that one going, Carly. So, this is that same paddock about 12 months ago. We would have put mung beans into that paddock. Uh, but it just did not rain, we never got the chance. Um, so that's our stubble load after the stripper, and that's, you can see the chaff lines there. It's pretty well in the same spot as those t last couple of photos. Yeah, so, it's not a lot of barley there, but there's hardly any outside of the wheel tracks. There's the old flea bone there, as you can see. Yeah, but that's our stubble load. So that's our next big trouble, is our stubble load. Um, especially when it, gets a little bit rotten like that, it's, it's no longer really attached to the ground. Um, this was taken the other day actually, we had um, a massive, um, I think it was about 7 mil or something, it was awesome. Uh, that's an irrigation field, we had canary in it and then we put 60 inch sorghum in on about 40 mil rain. Um, it, wasn't too, it worked out alright, but that's our wheel tracks, so with the chaff deck. So it's mainly canary in that, those wheel tracks. So what, we did spray that field. It was a really light rate of roundup. We, in those wheel track areas, we um, turned the nozzle bodies around and just did a lot higher rate. You know, just a lot driftier nozzle, and just that's what we did. This is um, maybe the season before, I think it was, a canary field, same sort of thing. But there's the odd weed outside the wheel tracks. Maybe we should have been using a weed seeker there. Um, but in the wheel track, you can just see how green it is. I probably left it too late. It's getting a bit. Uh, this is our awesome crop of barley that we have now, so that's why the photo doesn't, isn't any bigger than that. But that's, um, that was sunflower ground last summer, the summer just gone. And that's, you can see in the wheel track there, there's a bit of all the seeds and that from the, the sunflowers and that sort of thing, so. Uh, yeah, my favourite type of stripper, really. Um, now that I'm married and that, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it's cool. I, I really do like it. Um, it's quick, like harvest efficiency, that's just a byproduct of it if you ask me. Um, we're easy two to three K an hour quicker, if not, you know, in certain conditions. Um, if you've got down crop, I would grab the stripper any day of the week before I'd grab a draper. Um, it will lick it off the ground. Um, the wear and tear on the machine, like we sent the machine back to Dalby um, to get you know, warranty work done, and that's two years old, so that's what we usually do. And they reckon the, they've got far less wear in that machine than what they normally would in any other machines, or my previous one, which was a class as well. We've got far less dust, so when it comes to blowing the machine down and worrying about fires, um, it's, the machine is so much cleaner. Um, that's just reduced dust is good for anything, really. And if you don't cut the straw, you don't have to spread it. Um, if you put that into horsepower terms, you know, we all know that choppers use way too much horsepower. If you've got to try and push it back where it came from, especially in 40 feet, um, it takes a lot of effort. And they, all the manufacturers say you can do it, they're lying. <laughs> they can't. Um, they, they, they get close and they do okay, but you get a side wind or something like that, it doesn't work. Uh, that's us planting mung beans back into the stubble, so that photo's just to sort of show the, the stubble. You can see, you know, the planter is pretty cool. You've nearly got to blow the planter down at the end of the day because there's just so, many, there's so much stubble on it. Um, yeah, it gives you know, my, my pretty body. Um, that's just sort of the height, yeah. Uh, this crop here, that was actually planted dry into the stubble. Uh, they predicted rain, there's no real rain coming, there's no moisture in the ground. I thought, bugger it, let's just go, we'll give it a crack. And we just scratched her in with the NDF units, disc openers, and um, I think we had about 16 mil of rain. It wasn't a lot of rain, really, um, and the crop come up. So, yeah, it looks like a bit of a mongrel crop, but um, we wouldn't have had it otherwise. It's as simple as that. And if There's one um, area, we actually had a little bit of a fire, um, a, a power line, uh, land on the ground for a certain reason, and um, it burnt an area. Uh, not a lot of acres or anything like that. We still now can't get crop out of that ground, just with the way the weather's been the last few years, or the last you know, 12 months, 18 months. But in that, that particular season, not a thing come up. So if that's anything to go by, well, give me the stubble any day of the week. Um, we did safflower last winter. Um, I don't think I'll be doing that again, but anyway, it was interesting. Uh, but that's, we've got a time machine we set up on a pretty big frame uh, using XL units, um, and we did get through that stubble. Um, I've got videos on my phone of it all and that sort of thing. That was pretty cool. We did create a few haystacks. You might be able to see some in the photo there, but the stubble load even on that ground now is still pretty good. I'm really happy with it still. Um, you see the little mung beans coming up. Uh, that was last season, I think it was. So, uh, this photo here, um, the US, they're really starting to push cover crops and I reckon it's got a lot of merit. Um, it's, it's a good idea what they're doing over there. I don't know where we can fit in here, something to work on, I think. But, the, you know, they're growing rye during the winter um, to get their ground cover, but then they hit it with a gut full of glyphosate and then they plant soybeans back into it. So that's that photo on the far side. This other one, that's us. The real difference is, we made money out of our barley. They made nothing out of their rye. So if that's anything to go by, give me the stripper front any day of the week. Uh, yeah, that's just another photo of us there, this last season's mung beans. Uh, yeah, that's, um, that'd be nearly two years ago, but that's us harvesting our mung beans. And see the stubble cover left back on the ground after we've harvested? Um, so, you know, that's, that's the main reason, because mung beans don't leave a lot of stubble cover after you grow them, but, yeah. And that's our stubble load. Um, so, was, be, uh, the barley was harvested back in 16, and that's our, still our stubble. That was photo I was taken last week, so, in between the silver rows, so, it's still helping us. I don't think it'll give us too much trouble. It's slowly breaking down. Um, yeah, yeah, a bit of green barley there in old strip history, but that's pretty high moisture uh, crop where the machine's going there now. So, 
That was yeah, a few years ago now, two years ago. So, but mainly, um, I was going to say, what was that? Yeah, any questions, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. I've probably forgotten something. <laughs> yeah. Right in line. <laughs> no drums, mate. Right? Yo. How much We haven't noticed any difference at all, really. Um, there was actually spinners on the back, you know, just the center send the sieves, whatever comes off the sieves, sideways anyway. So all we did is just tap into those hydraulic, where those hydraulic lines were, and that's what runs the, that, that's what you lose, I'm lost. <laughs> um, so she's just running off that oil flow, so we have noticed no difference. Probably if anything, we just gotta keep an eye on the tracking of the canvases. Uh, we did actually have trouble last time we harvested sunflowers. Um, you know, obviously sunflowers got a, right, a really tough stalk. Um, I don't know if we went in reverse or what we did wrong, but a stalk went up and this happens to draper fronts as well. It pushed some of the tin up and it caught on one of the lugs on the canvas and stalled out. There is a sensor on one, one of them. Guess which one stalled out, the one without the sensor. So it burnt the canvas out, but uh, we went home, cut another draper mat up. Uh, we were going again in about two hours. So it's just, a, just one of those things, you know, it's like, so. Yeah. Coming in, sorry? How hard was it? How hard was it to set the jump up in class? Was it a bad ball? Uh, it was pretty easy. Um, a lot of the part, oh, well, this, I think that hopefully they've got the problem solved now, but it did not suit my machine, my particular machine. I think class made some changes and they just had to change the suit. But on the whole scheme of things, if you know how to use a welder a little bit, it only took us another, about half a day and we had them on anyway. But on the, if they had everything right, yeah, no dramas at all. Easy. So we didn't really have a lot of trouble at all. Uh, we, probably made, we probably mounted them a touch higher than what they maybe normally are, just where they spit out the back. Uh, mainly because they're stubble heights, you know, especially with sorghum and obviously sunflowers is another one. Um, I pr yeah, we probably made them a bit higher like that. But I don't think it made any difference. You said a lot of sugar, but I picked that up in the discussion. You actually said all crops. You said sunflowers, mountains, barley, sorghum, sorghum, everything? No, the stripper we've mainly only used on wheat and barley. Um, yeah, we're. Uh, people have asked me if I use in sorghum and that. Oh, yeah, this is one thing I haven't explained. Um, it needs the stubble to work properly. The better, the more stubble load you got, the better. Um, if you've got a light crop, yeah, I don't know if I'd use it. Like we didn't use it on a couple hundred acres there last year because it was quite a, quite a poor crop. And uh, I mean, like not even half a ton of the acre sort of yield. Um, yeah, we're on we're on 15 inch spacing at the moment for our winter crop. We need to change that. It's just, um, you know, I really want to go back to like a 10 inch NDF on disc unit. Um, that's that's the plan. Drought sort of stopping that at the moment, but. Um, the narrow rows definitely helped a lot. Um, we took on another block there two years ago and it was planted like old school gyral. And um, it just did a magic job in that. Just did not leave a seed behind, it's unreal. Um, you do find in the wheel tracks, like, especially if you've got a bit of a gap in your wheel tracks, you'll see the odd seeds sort of fly through up between the rows, but it's bugger or grain. And when you work out the efficiency of the front, it's, it's you know, just keep up. Uh. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, all good. Yeah. Yeah, it was a super advantage after this. Do you find it's integral to have um, that super straw um, down, put your, your weed seeds on top of your chaff test and then again in contact with the soil? And yeah, do you, do you find that you're compromising that at all? What is driving on those little tracks and pressing those weed seeds into contact with the soil? What's the thoughts on that? Well, we haven't really noticed. Well. Well, at the moment, every second wheel set of wheel tracks is getting driven over by the spray rig fairly regularly. 
Um, so we're not noticing any real difference between those wheel tracks compared to the other ones that aren't hardly ever driven on until the planter rolls across the field again. So no, not really. We haven't really noticed any real difference at all. Um, it just sits there and with, with rain and that you sort of hope it just sort of you know, melts down anyway a bit. Yeah. Sort of, but if anything does get growing there, nothing, it doesn't get away. It just sits there. You know, it's pretty tight ground at times. Pretty hostile area. Uh, Any more questions for Greg at Peter? Thank you. Good.